Rudolf Ludwig Karl Fierko was a German physician, anthropologist, pathologist, prehistorian, biologist, writer, editor, and politician, known for his advancement of public health. He is known as the father of modern pathology because his work helped to discredit humorism, bringing more science to medicine. He is also known as the founder of social medicine and veterinary pathology, and to his colleagues, the Pope of Medicine. Born and raised in Skivelbian as an only child of a working-class family, he proved to be a brilliant student. Dissuaded by his weak voice, he abandoned his initial interest in theology and turned to medicine. With special military scholarship, he earned his medical degree from Friedrich Wilhelm's Institute, Humboldt University of Berlin, under the tutelage of Johannes Peter Muller. He worked at the Charite Hospital under Robert Furiab, whom he eventually succeeded as the prosector. Although he failed to contain the 1847-1848 typhus epidemic in Upper Silesia, his report laid the foundation for public health in Germany, as well as his political and social activities. From it, he coined a well-known aphorism, medicine is a social science, and politics is nothing else but medicine on a large scale. He participated in the Revolution of 1848, which led to his expulsion from Charite the next year. He published a newspaper Die Medicinisk Reform, Medical Reform, during this period to disseminate his social and political ideas. He took the first chair of pathological anatomy at the University of Würzburg in 1849. After five years, Charite invited him back to direct its newly built Institute for Pathology, and simultaneously becoming the first chair of pathological anatomy and physiology at Berlin University. The campus of Charite is now named Campus Fierco Klinikum. He co-founded the political party Deutsche Fortschrittsparte by which he was elected to the Prussian House of Representatives, and won a seat in the Reichstag. His opposition to Otto von Bismarck's financial policy resulted in an anecdotal sausage duel between the two. But he ardently supported Bismarck in his anti-Catholic campaigns, the social revolution he himself named as Kulturkampf, culture struggle. A prolific writer, his scientific writings alone exceeded 2,000 in number. Among his books, Cellular Pathology published in 1858 is regarded as the root of modern pathology. This work also popularized the third dictum in cell theory, Omnis cellula e cellula, all cells come from cells, although his idea originated in 1855. He founded journals such as Archiv für Pathologische Anatomie und Physiologie und für Klinisk Medizin, now Fierko's Archiv, and Zeitschrift für Ethnology. Journal of Ethnology. The latter is published by German Anthropological Association and the Berlin Society for Anthropology, Ethnology, and Prehistory, the societies of which he also founded. Fierko was the first to precisely describe and give names of diseases such as leukemia, chotoma, achronosis, embolism, and thrombosis. He coined scientific terms, chromatin, agenesis, parenchyma, osteoid, amyloid degeneration, and spina bifida. His description of the transmission cycle of a roundworm Trichinella spiralis established the importance of meat inspection, which was started in Berlin. He developed the first systematic method of autopsy involving surgery of all body parts and microscopic examination. A number of medical terms are named after him, including Fierko's node, Fierko Robin spaces, Fierko Seckel syndrome, and Fierko's triad. He was the first to use hair analysis in criminal investigation, and recognized its limitations. His laborious analyses of the hair, skin, and eye color of school children made him criticize the Aryan race concept as a myth. He was an ardent anti-evolutionist. He referred to Charles Darwin as an ignoramus and his own student Ernst Haeckel, the leading advocate of Darwinism in Germany, as a fool. He discredited the original specimen of Neanderthal man as nothing but that of a deformed human, and not an ancestral species. He was an agnostic. In 1861, he was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. In 1892, he was awarded the Copley Medal of the British Royal Society. He was elected to the Prussian Academy of Sciences in 1873 
and entitled an N. nobleman von Fierko, but which he declined. Life and Scientific Career Fierko was born in Skvelbian in eastern Pomerania, Prussia, now Swidwin in Poland. He was the only child of Karl Christian Siegfried Fierko, 1785-1865, and Johanna Maria Nehesa, 1785-1857. His father was a farmer and the city treasurer. Academically brilliant, he always topped in his classes and was fluent in German, Latin, Greek, Hebrew, English, Arabic, French, Italian, and Dutch. He progressed to the gymnasium in Kolin, now Kozelin in Poland, in 1835 with the goal to become a pastor. He graduated in 1839 upon a thesis titled A Life Full of Work and Toil is Not a Burden but a Benediction. However, he chose to start studying medicine mainly because he considered his voice too weak for preaching. In 1839, he received a military fellowship, a scholarship for gifted children from poor family to become arm surgeon, for studying medicine at Friedrich Wilhelm's Institute in Berlin now Humboldt University of Berlin. He was most influenced by Johannes Peter Muller. He defended his thesis titled De Rheumate Presertum Cornea, Corneal Manifestations of Rheumatic Disease, for medical degree on October 21, 1843, with Muller as his doctoral advisor. Immediately on graduation he became subordinate physician to Muller. But shortly after, he joined the Charite Hospital in Berlin for internship. In 1844, he was appointed as medical assistant to the prosector, pathologist, Robert Furyab, from whom he learned microscopy for his interest in pathology. Furyab was also the editor of an abstract journal that specialized in foreign work, allowing Fierco to be exposed to the more forward-looking scientific ideas of France and England. Fierco published his first scientific paper in 1845 in which he wrote the earliest known pathological descriptions of leukemia. He qualified the medical licensure examination in 1846, and immediately succeeded Fierab as hospital prosector at the Charite. In 1847, he was appointed to his first academic position with the rank of Privat Dozent. Because his writings were not receiving favorable attention by German editors, with colleague Benno Reinhardt he founded Archiv für Pathologische Anatomie und Physiologie und für Klinische Medizin, now known as Fierko's Archiv, in 1847. He edited alone from Reinhardt's death in 1852 until his own. His journal began publishing high level contributions based on the criterion that no papers would be published which contained outdated, untested, dogmatic, or speculative ideas. Unlike his German peers, Fierko had great faith in clinical observation, animal experimentation, to determine causes of diseases and the effects of drugs, and pathological anatomy particularly at the microscopic level, as the basic principles of investigation in medical sciences. He went further and stated that the cell was the basic unit of the body that had to be studied to understand disease. Although the term cell had been coined in the 1665 by an English scientist Robert Hooke, the building blocks of life were still considered to be the 21 tissues of Bichat, a concept described by the French physician Marie Bichat. The Prussian government never deployed Fierko to study the typhus epidemic in Upper Silesia in during 1847-1848. It was from this medical campaign that he developed his ideas on social medicine and politics after seeing the victims and their poverty. Even though he was not particularly successful in combating the epidemic, his 190-paged report on the typhus epidemic in Upper Silesia in 1848 became a turning point in politics and public health in Germany. He returned to Berlin on March 10, 1848, and only eight days later, a revolution broke out against the government in which he played an active part. To fight political injustice he helped finding Dimedicinisk Reform, Medical Reform, a weekly newspaper for promoting social medicine, in July of that year. The newspaper ran under the banners Medicine is a Social Science and the Physician is the Natural Attorney of the Poor. Political pressures forced him terminate the publication in June 1849 and became expelled from his official position. In November, 
he was given academic appointment and left Berlin for University of Würzburg to hold Germany's first chair of pathological anatomy. During his six-year period there, he concentrated on his scientific work, including detailed studies on venous thrombosis and cellular theory. His first major work there was a six-volume Handbuch der Speziellen Pathologie und Therapie, Handbook on Special Pathology and Therapeutics, published in 1854. In 1856, he returned to Berlin to become the newly created Chair for Pathological Anatomy and Physiology at the Friedrich Wilhelms University, as well as Director of the newly built Institute for Pathology on the premises of the Chairite. He held the latter post for the next 20 years. Scientific Contributions Cell Biology Fierko is credited with several very important discoveries. His most widely known scientific contribution is his cell theory, which built on the work of Theodor Schwann. He was one of the first to accept the work of Robert Remack, who showed the origins of cells was the division of pre-existing cells. He did not initially accept the evidence for cell division, believing it only occurs in certain types of cells. When it dawned on him that Remack might be right, in 1855, he published Remack's work as his own, which caused a falling out between the two. This work, Fierco encapsulated in the epigram Omnis Cellula e Cellula, IDEST, All Cells, Come, From Cells, which he published in 1855. The epigram was actually coined by Francois Vincent Raspail, but popularized by Fierco. It is a rejection of the concept of spontaneous generation, which held that organisms could arise from non living matter. For example, maggots were believed to spontaneously appear in decaying meat. Francesco Ridi carried out experiments which disproved this notion and coined the maxim om vivum ex ovo, every living thing comes from a living thing literally from an egg, Fierco, and his predecessors, extended this to state that the only source for a living cell was another living cell. Cancer In 1845, Fierco and John Hughes Bennett independently observed abnormal increase in white blood cells in patients. Fierco correctly identified the condition as blood disease, and named it leukemia in 1847, later anglicized to leukemia. In 1857, he was the first to describe a type of tumor called chotoma that originated from the clivus, at the base of the skull. Theory on Cancer Origin Fierco was the first to correctly link the origin of cancers from otherwise normal cells. His teacher Muller had proposed that cancers originated from cells, but from special cells, which he called blastema. In 1855, he suggested that cancers arise from the activation of dormant cells, perhaps similar to cells now known as stem cells, present in mature tissue. Fierco believed that cancer is caused by severe irritation in the tissues, and his theory came to be known as chronic irritation theory. He thought, rather wrongly, that the irritation spread in the form of liquid so that cancer rapidly increases. His theory was largely ignored, as he was proved wrong that it was not by liquid, but by metastasis of the already cancerous cells that cancers spread. First described by Karl Thiersk in the 1860s. But he made a crucial observation that certain cancers, carcinoma in modern sense, were inherently associated with white blood cells, which are now called macrophages, that produced irritation, inflammation. It was only towards the end of the 20th century that Fierko's theory was taken seriously. It was realized that specific cancers, including those of mesothelioma, lung, prostate, bladder, pancreatic, cervical, esophageal, melanoma, and head and neck, are indeed strongly associated with long-term inflammation. In addition it became clear that long-term use of anti-inflammatory drugs, such as aspirin, reduced cancer risk. Experiment also shows that drugs that block inflammation simultaneously inhibit tumor formation and development. The Kaiser's Case Fierko was one of the leading physicians to Kaiser Friedrich III, who suffered from cancer of larynx. While other physicians such as Ernst von Bergmann suggested surgical removal of the entire larynx, Fierko was opposed to it because no successful operation of such kind had ever been done. 
the British surgeon, Morel Mackenzie, performed a biopsy in 1887 and sent it to Fierco, who identified them as Pachydermia varicosa laryngis. Fierco affirmed that the tissues were not cancerous, even after several biopsy tests. The Kaiser died on June 15, 1888. The next day a post-mortem examination was performed by Fierco and his assistant. They found that the larynx was extensively damaged due to ulcer, and microscopic examination confirmed epidermal carcinoma. Die Krankheit Kaiser Friedrich de Dritten, the medical report of Kaiser Friedrich III, was published on July 11 under the lead authorship of Bergman. But Fierco and Mackenzie were omitted, and they were particularly criticized for all their works. The arguments between them turned into a century-long controversy, resulting in Fierco being accused of misdiagnosis and malpractice. But reassessment of the diagnostic history revealed that Fierco was right in his findings and decisions. It is now believed that the Kaiser had hybrid varicose carcinoma, a very rare form of varicose carcinoma, and that Fierco had no way of correctly identifying it. The cancer type was correctly identified only in 1948 by Lauren Ackerman. Anatomy Another significant credit relates to the discovery, made approximately simultaneously by Fierco and Charles Emil Troisier, that an enlarged left supraclavicular node is one of the earliest signs of gastrointestinal malignancy, commonly of the stomach, or less commonly, lung cancer. This has become known as Fierco's node and simultaneously Troisier's sign. Thromboembolism Fierco is also known for elucidating the mechanism of pulmonary thromboembolism, a condition of blood clotting in the blood vessels, coining the terms embolism and thrombosis. He noted that blood clots in the pulmonary artery originate first from venous thrombi, stating in 1859, the detachment of larger or smaller fragments from the end of the softening thrombus which are carried along by the current of blood and driven into remote vessels. This gives rise to the very frequent process on which I have bestowed the name of embolia. Having made these initial discoveries based on autopsies, he proceeded to put forward a scientific hypothesis, that pulmonary thrombi are transported from the veins of the leg and that the blood has the ability to carry such an object. He then proceeded to prove this hypothesis through well-designed experiments, repeated numerous times to consolidate evidence, and with meticulously detailed methodology. This work rebuked a claim made by the eminent French pathologist Jean Cruvelhier that phlebitis led to clot development and therefore coagulation was the main consequence of venous inflammation. This was a view held by many before Fierco's work. Related to this research, Fierco described the factors contributing to venous thrombosis, Fierco's triad. Pathology Furthermore, Fierco founded the medical fields of cellular pathology and comparative pathology, comparison of diseases common to humans and animals. His most important work in the field was cellular pathology, dicellular pathology in ihrer Begründung auf physiologisch und pathologisch Jobler, published in 1858, as a collection of his lectures. This is regarded as the basis of modern medical science, and the greatest advance which scientific medicine had made since its beginning. His very innovative work may be viewed as between that of Morgani, whose work Fierco studied, and that of Paul Ehrlich, who studied at the Cherite while Fierco was developing microscopic pathology there. One of Fierco's major contributions to German medical education was to encourage the use of microscopes by medical students, and he was known for constantly urging his students to think microscopically. He was the first to establish a link between infectious diseases between humans and animals, for which he coined the term zoonoses. He also introduced scientific terms such as chromatin, agenesis, parenchyma, osteoid, amyloid degeneration, and spina bifida. His concept on pathology directly opposed humorism, an ancient medical dogma that diseases were due to imbalanced body fluids, hypothetically called humors, that still pervaded. Parasitology Fierco worked out the life cycle of a roundworm Trichinella spiralis. Fierco noticed a mass of circular white flecks in the muscle of dog and human cadaver, similar to those described by Richard Owen in 1835. 
he confirmed through microscopic observation that the white particles were indeed the larvae of roundworms, being curled up in the muscle tissue. Rudolf Luckert found that these tiny worms could develop into adult roundworms in the intestine of a dog. He correctly asserted that these worms could also cause human helminthiasis. Fierko further demonstrated that if the infected meat is first heated to 137 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes, the worms could not infect dogs or humans. He established that human infection occurs through contaminated pork. This directly led to the importance of meat inspection, which was first adopted in Berlin. Autopsy Fierko was the first to develop a systematic method of autopsy, based on his knowledge of cellular pathology. The modern autopsy still constitute his techniques. His first most significant autopsy was on a 50-year-old woman in 1845. He found from the body an unusual amount of white blood cells, and gave a detailed description in 1847 and named the condition as Lakami. One on his autopsies in 1857 was the first description of vertebral disc rupture. His autopsy on a baby in 1856 was the first description of congenital pulmonary lymphangiectasia, the name given by K. M. Lawrence a century later, a rare and fatal disease of lung. From his experience of post mortem examinations of a number of cadaver, he published his method in a small book in 1876. His book was the first to describe the techniques of autopsy specifically to examine abnormalities in organs, and retain important tissues for further examination and demonstration. Unlike any other procedure before, he practiced complete surgery of all body parts with body organs dissected one by one. This has become the standard method. Acronysis Fierko discovered the clinical syndrome which he called acronysis a metabolic disorder in which a patient accumulates homogentasic acid in connective tissues and which is indicated by discoloration under the microscope. He found the unusual symptom from an autopsy of the corpse of a 67-year-old man on May 8, 1884. This was the first time this abnormal disease affecting cartilage and connective tissue was observed and analyzed. His description and coining of the name appeared in the October 1866 issue of V. Schau's Archive. Forensic. Fierko was the first to analyze hair in criminal investigation, and made the first forensic report on it in 1861. He was called as an expert witness in a murder case, and he used hair samples collected from the victim. He became the first to recognize the limitation of hair as a conclusive evidence. He found that hairs can be different in an individual, and individual hair has characteristic features and that hairs from different individuals can be strikingly similar. He concluded that evidence based on hair analysis is inconclusive. His testimony runs. Quote he hairs found on the defendant do not possess any so pronounced peculiarities or individualities so that no one with certainty has the right to assert that they must have originated from the head of the victim. Anthropology and Prehistory Biology Fierko developed an interest in anthropology in 1865, when he discovered pile dwellings in northern Germany. In 1869, he co founded the German Anthropological Association. In 1870, he founded the Society for Anthropology, Ethnology, and Prehistory, Gesellschaft für Anthropologie, Ethnologie und Ergeschicht which was very influential in coordinating and intensifying German archaeological research. He edited its journal Zeitschrift für Ethnology, Journal of Ethnology, which he founded in 1866, until his death, and was several times, at least 15 times, its president. In 1870, he led a major excavation of the hill forts in Pomerania. He also excavated wall mounds in Wolstein in 1875 with Robert Cook, whose paper he edited on the subject. For his contributions in German archaeology, the Rudolf Fierko lecture is held annually in his honor. He made field trips to Asia Minor, the Caucasus, Egypt, Nubia, and other places, sometimes in the company of Heinrich Schliemann. His 1879 journey to the site of Troy is described in Beitrich zur Landskund in Troas, Contributions to the Knowledge of the Landscape in Troy, 1879, 
and all Trojanus Graver UND Shuttle, Old Trojan Graves and Skulls, 1882. Anti-Darwinism Fierco was an opponent of Darwin's theory of evolution, and particularly skeptical of the emergent thesis of human evolution. On September 22, 1877, he delivered a public address entitled The Freedom of Science in the Modern State before the Congress of German Naturalists and Physicians in Munich. There he spoke against the teaching of the theory of evolution in schools, arguing that it was as yet an unproven hypothesis that lacked empirical foundations and that, therefore, its teaching would negatively affect scientific studies. Ernst Haeckel, who had been Fierko's student, later reported that his former professor said that it is quite certain that man did not descend from the apes, not caring in the least that now almost all experts of good judgment hold the opposite conviction. Fierko became one of the leading opponents on the debate over the authenticity of Neanderthal, discovered in 1856, as distinct species and ancestral to modern humans. He himself examined the original fossil in 1872, and presented his observations before the Berliner Gesellschaft für Anthropologie, Ethnologie und Ergeschicht. He stated that the Neanderthal had not been a primitive form of human, but an abnormal human being, who, judging by the shape of his skull, had been injured and deformed, and considering the unusual shape of his bones, had been arthritic, rickety, and feeble. With such an authority, the fossil was rejected as new species. With this reasoning, Fierco judged Darwin an ignoramus and Heckel a fool and was loud and frequent in the publication of these judgments. On September 22, 1877, at the 50th Conference of the German Association of Naturalists and Physicians held in Munich, Heckel pleaded for introducing evolution in the public school curricula, and tried to dissuade Darwinism from social Darwinism. His campaign was because of Hermann Muller a school teacher who was banned because of his teaching a year earlier on the inanimate origin of life from carbon. This resulted in prolonged public debate with Fierco. A few days later Fierco responded that Darwinism was only a hypothesis, and morally dangerous to students. This severe criticism of Darwinism was immediately taken up by the London Times, from which further debates erupted among English scholars. Heckel wrote his arguments in the October issue of Nature titled The Present Position of Evolution Theory, to which Fierco responded in the next issue with an article The Liberty of Science in the Modern State. The debate made Heckel write a full book Freedom in Science and Teaching in 1879. That year the issue was discussed in the Prussian House of Representatives and the verdict was in favor of Fierco. In 1882 the Prussian education policy officially excluded natural history in schools. Years later, the noted German physician Karl Ludwig Schleich, would recall a conversation he held with Fierko, who was a close friend of him, on to the subject of Darwinism. I don't believe in all this, Fierko told me. If I lie on my sofa and blow the possibilities away from me, as another man may blow the smoke of his cigar, I can of course, sympathize with such dreams. But they don't stand the test of knowledge. Heckel is a fool. That will be apparent one day. As far as that goes, if anything like transmutation did occur it could only happen in the course of pathological degeneration. Fierko's ultimate opinion about evolution was reported a year before he died, in his own words. Quote. The intermediate form is unimaginable save in a dream. We cannot teach or consent that it is an achievement that man descended from the ape or other animal. End of quote. Fierko's anti-evolutionism, like that of Albert von Kalliker and Thomas Brown, did not come from religion, since he was not a believer. Anti-racism. Fierko believed that Heckel's modest propagation of social Darwinism was in its nature politically dangerous and anti-democratic and he also criticized it because he saw it as related to the emergent socialist movement in Germany, ideas about cultural superiority, and militarism. In 1885, he launched a study of craniometry, which gave surprising results contradictory to contemporary scientific racist theories on the Aryan race, leading him to denounce the Nordic mysticism at the 1885 Anthropology Congress in Karlsruhe. Joseph Kalman, a collaborator of Fierko, 
stated in the same Congress that the people of Europe, be they German, Italian, English, or French, belong to a mixture of various races, further declaring that the results of craniology led to a struggle against any theory concerning the superiority of this or that European race on others. He analyzed the hair, skin, and eye color of 6,758,827 school children to identify the Jews and Aryans. His findings, published in 1886 and concluding that there could be neither a Jewish nor a German race, were regarded as a blow to anti-Semitism and the existence of an Aryan race. Anti-Germ Theory of Diseases Fierko did not believe in the germ theory of diseases, as advocated by Louis Pasteur and Robert Cook. He proposed that diseases came from abnormal activities inside the cells, not from outside pathogens. He believed that epidemics were social in origin, and the way to combat epidemics was political, not medical. He regarded germ theory as hindrance to prevention and cure. He considered social factors such as poverty as major cause of diseases. He even attacked Cox and Ignis Semmelweis' policy of handwashing as an antiseptic practice. He postulated that germs were only using infected organs as habitats, but they were not the cause, and stated, If I could live my life over again, I would devote it to proving that germs seek their natural habitat, diseased tissue, rather than being the cause of diseased tissue. Politics and Social Medicine More than a laboratory physician, Fierko was an impassioned advocate for social and political reform. His ideology involved social inequality as the cause of diseases that requires political actions, stating, Medicine is a social science, and politics is nothing else but medicine on a large scale. Medicine, as a social science, as the science of human beings, has the obligation to point out problems and to attempt their theoretical solution, the politician, the practical anthropologist, must find the means for their actual solution. Science for its own sake usually means nothing more than science for the sake of the people who happen to be pursuing it. Knowledge which is unable to support action is not genuine and how unsure is activity without understanding. If medicine is to fulfill her great task, then she must enter the political and social life. The physicians are the natural attorneys of the poor, and the social problems should largely be solved by them. Fierco actively worked for social change to fight poverty and diseases. His method involves pathological observations and statistical analyses. He called this new field of social medicine a social science. His most important influences could be noted in Latin America, where his disciples introduced his social medicine. For example, his student Max Wessenhofer became director of pathology at the Medical School of the University of Chile, becoming the most influential advocate. One of Wessenhofer's students, Salvador Allende, through social and political activities based on Fierco's doctrine, became the 29th president of Chile, 1970-1973. Fierco made himself known as a pronounced Democrat in the year of revolutions in Germany. 1848. His political views are evident in his report on the typhus outbreak of Upper Silesia, where he states the outbreak could not be solved by treating individual patients with drugs or with minor changes in food, housing, or clothing laws, but only through radical action to promote the advancement of an entire population, which could only be achieved by full and unlimited democracy and education, freedom, and prosperity. These radical statements and his minor part in the revolution caused the government to remove him, 1849, from his position, although within a year he was reinstated as prosector on probation. Prosector was a secondary position in the hospital. This secondary position in Berlin convinced him to accept the chair of pathological anatomy at the medical school in the provincial town of Würzburg, where he continued his scientific research. Six years later, he had attained fame in scientific and medical circles, and was reinstated at Cherite Hospital. In 1859, he became a member of the Municipal Council of Berlin and began his career as a civic reformer. Elected to the Prussian Diet in 1862, he became leader of the Radical or Progressive Party, and from 1880 to 1893, he was a member of the Reichstag. He worked to improve the healthcare conditions for Berlin citizens, 
especially by working towards modern water and sewer systems. Fierco is credited as a founder of social medicine, frequently focusing on the fact that disease is never purely biological, but often socially derived or spread, and of anthropology. The Sausage Duel As a co-founder and member of the Liberal Party, Deutsche Fort Schritz Partei, he was a leading political antagonist of Bismarck. He was opposed to Bismarck's excessive military budget, which angered Bismarck sufficiently to challenge Fierco to a duel in 1865. Of the two versions, one has Fierco declining because he considered dueling an uncivilized way to solve a conflict. The second has passed into legend, but was well documented in the contemporary scientific literature. It has Fierco, having been the challenged and therefore entitled to choose the weapons, selecting two pork sausages, a normal sausage and another one, loaded with trichinella larvae. His challenger declined the proposition as risky. Kohl Tourkampf Fierco supported Bismarck in an attempt to reduce the political and social influence of the Catholic Church, between 1871 and 1887. He remarked that the movement was acquiring the character of a great struggle in the interest of humanity. He called it Kulturkampf, culture struggle, during the discussion of Fox May Laws, Meg Setsi. Fierco was respected in Masonic circles, and according to one source may have been a Freemason, though no official record of this has been found. Death Fierco broke his thigh bone on January 4, 1902, jumping off a running streetcar while exiting the electric tramway. Although he anticipated full recovery, the fractured femur never healed, and restricted his physical activity. His health gradually deteriorated and he died of heart failure after eight months, on September 5, 1902, in Berlin. A state funeral was held on September 9 in the assembly room of the magistracy in the Berlin town hall, which was decorated with laurels, palms and flowers. He was buried in the altar St. Matthaus Kirchhof in Skinneberg, Berlin. His tomb was shared by his wife on February 21, 1913.